Chapter 9, The Blood Bottler. Woo! Suddenly, a tremendous thumping noise came from outside the cave entrance, and a voice like thunder shouted, Runt! Is you there, Runt? I is hearing you jabbling. Who is you jabbling to, Runt? Look out, cried the BFG. It's the Blood Bottler! But before he had finished speaking, the stone was rolled aside and a 50-foot giant, more than twice as tall and wide as the BFG, came striding into the cave. He was naked except for a dirty little piece of cloth around his bottom. Sophie was on the tabletop. The enormous partly eaten snozcumber was lying near her. She ducked behind it. The creature came clumping into the cave and stood towering over the BFG. Who was you jabbling to in here just now? he boomed. I used jabbling to myself, the BFG answered. Piff or fizz, shouted the blood bottler. Bug swallop, he boomed. You is talking to a human being, that's what I is thinking. No, no, cried the BFG. Yes, yes, boomed the blood bottler. I is guessing you was snitched away a human being and brought it back to your bunghole as a pet. So now I is winkling it out and guzzling it as extra snacks before my supper. The poor BFG was very nervous. There is n n no one in here, he stammered. Oh my goodness, that guy's terrifying. This story is not appropriate for children. Look away, look away. Puffles, it's fine, it's written for children. It's too scary, it's fine. Oh, the BFG stammered. Why don't you l leave me alone? The blood bottle appointed a finger as large as a tree trunk at the BFG. Runty little scum screwer, he shouted. Piffling little swish figler, squinty little bottle wart, pruny little pog swizzler. I's now going to search the primroses. He grabbed the BFG by the arm, and you is going to help me do it. Us together is going to winkle out this tasteful little human being, he shouted. The BFG had intended to whisk Sophie off the table as soon as he got the chance and hide her behind his back, but now there was no hope of doing this. Sophie peered around the chewed-off end of the enormous snozcumber, watching the two giants as they moved away down the cave. The blood bottler was a gruesome sight. His skin was reddish pink. There was black hair sprouting on his chest and arms and on his stomach. The hair on his head was long and dark and tangled. His foul face was round and squashy looking. The eyes were tiny black holes. The nose was small, but the mouth was huge. It spread right across the face, almost ear to ear, and it had lips that were like two gigantic purple frankfurters, lying one on top of the other. Craggy yellow teeth stuck out between the two purple frankfurter lips, and rivers of spit ran down over the chin. It was not in the least difficult to believe that this ghastly brute ate men, women and children every night. The blood bottler, still holding the BFG by the arm, was examining the rows and rows of bottles. You and your pibbling bottles, he shouted. What's he putting in them? Nothing that would interest you, the BFG answered. You was only interested in guzzling human beings. And you was dotty as a dog swoggler, cried the blood bottler. Soon the blood bottler would be coming back, Sophie told herself, and he was bound to search the tabletop. But she couldn't possibly jump off the table. It was twelve feet high. She'd break a leg. The snozcumber, although it was as thick as a perambulator, was not going to hide her if the blood bottler picked it up. She examined the chewed off end. It had large seeds in the middle, each one as big as a melon. They were embedded in soft, slimy stuff. Taking care to stay out of sight, Sophie reached forward and scooped away half a dozen of these seeds. This left a hole in the middle of the snozcumber large enough for her to crouch in so long as she rolled herself up into a ball. She crawled into it. It was a wet and slimy hiding place, but what did that matter if it was going to save her from being eaten? The blood bottler and the BFG were coming back towards the table now. The BFG was nearly fainting with fear. Any moment he was telling himself Sophie would be discovered and eaten. Suddenly, the blood bottler grabbed the half-eaten snozcumber. The BFG stared at the bare table. Sophie, where is you? He thought desperately. You cannot possibly be jumping off that high table. So where is you hiding, Sophie? So this is the filthing, rotten, glubbage you is eating, boomed the blood bottler, holding up the partly eaten snozcumber. You must be cockles to be guzzling such rub squash. For a moment, the blood bottler seemed to have forgotten about his search for Sophie. The BFG decided to lead him further off the track. I is the scrumdiddly unctuous snozcumber, he said. I is guzzling it gleefully every night and day. You never try in a snozcumber, blood bottler. Human beans is juicier, the blood bottler said. 
He was talking Romy Tot, the BFG said, growing braver by the second. He was thinking that if only he could get the blood bottler to take one bite of the repulsive vegetable, the sheer foulness of its flavour would send him bellowing out of the cave. Oh, he is happy to let you sample it, the BFG went on. But please, when you see how truly glumptious it is, do not be guzzling the whole thing. Leave me a little snitchet for my supper. The blood bottler stared suspiciously with small piggy eyes at the snores cumber. Sophie, crouching inside the chewed off end, began to tremble all over. You was not switch fiddling me, is you? said the blood bottler. Never, cried the BFG passionately. Take a bite, and I am positive you'll be shouting out, oh well, scrum diddly ultras, this wonder veg is. The BFG could see the greedy blood bottler's mouth beginning to water more than ever at the prospect of extra food. Vegetables is very good for you, he went on. It is not healthsome always to be eating meaty things. Just this once, the blood bottler said, I's going to taste these rots and eats of yours, but I's warning you that if it is filthsome, I is smashing it over your sludgy little head. He picked up the snores cumber. He began raising it on its long journey to his mouth, some 50 feet up in the air. Sophie wanted to scream, don't, but that would have been an even more certain death. Crouching among the slimy seeds, she felt herself being lifted up and up and up. Suddenly, there was a crunch as the blood bottle a bit a huge hunk off the end. Sophie saw his yellow teeth clamping together a few inches from her head. Then there was utter darkness. She was in his mouth. She caught a whiff of his evil smelling breath. It stank of bad meat. She waited for the teeth to go crunch once more. She prayed that she would be killed quickly. Youch! roared the blood bottler. Oh, Welch, leech! And then he spat. All of the great lumps of snorts cumber that were in his mouth, as well as Sophie herself, went shooting out across the cave. If Sophie had struck the stony wall of the cave, she would most certainly have been killed. Instead, she hit the soft folds of the BFG's black cloak hanging against the wall. She dropped to the ground, half stunned. She crawled under the hem of the cloak, and there she crouched. You little swine buggler, roared the blood bottler. You little pig swiller. He rushed at the BFG and smashed what was left of the snoz cumber over his head. Fragments of the filthy vegetables splashed all over the cave. You was not loving it? The BFG asked innocently, rubbing his head. Loving it? yelled the blood bottler. That is the most disgusterous taste that has ever clutched in my teeth. You must be buggles to be swallowing sludge like that. Every night you could be galloping off, happy as a hamburger, and gobbling juicy human beings. Eating human beings is wrong and evil, the BFG said. It's guzzly and glumptious, shouted the blood bottler. And tonight, I is galloping off to Chile to swabble a few human chili beans. Is you wishing to know why I is choosing chili? I is not wishing to know anything, the BFG said, very dignified. I is choosing chili, the blood bottler, blood bottler said, because I is fed up with the taste of Esquimos. It is important I is plenty of cold eats in this scuttling hot weather. And the next coldest thing to an Esquimo is a chilli bean. Human beans from chilli is very chilli. Horrible, the BFG said. You ought to be ashamed. Other giants is all saying they is wanting to gallop off to England tonight to guzzle school chiddlers, the blood bottler said. I was very fond indeed of English school chiddlers. They has a nice inky booky flavour. Run, children! Puffles, it's not real, don't panic. <laughs> Perhaps I will change my mind and go to England with them. You was disgusting, the BFG said. And you was an insult to the giant peoples, shouted the blood bottler. You was not fit to be a giant. You was a squinky little squiddler. You was a pibbling little pipsqueak. You was a cream puff nut. With that, the horrible blood bottling giant strode out of the cave. The BFG ran to the cave entrance and quickly rolled the stone back into place. Sophie, he whispered. Sophie, where is you, Sophie? Sophie emerged from under the hem of the black cloak. I'm here she said. The BFG picked her up and held her tenderly in the palm of his hand. Oh, why, well, you're so happy to be finding you all in one lump, he said. I was in his mouth, Sophie said. You was what? cried the BFG. Sophie told him what had happened. And there I was telling him to eat the filth and snores cumber, and you was all the time inside it, the BFG cried. Not much fun, Sophie said. Just look at you, you poor little chiddler, cried the BFG. You was all covered in snog cumber and giant spit. He set about cleaning her up as best he could. I is hating those other giants more than ever now, he said. You know what I should like? 
What? Sophie said. I should like to find a way of disappearing them, every single one. I'd be glad to help you, Sophie said. Let me see if I can't think up a way of doing it.